Hello and welcome back to another episode of Transport Fever 2. In this video, now that we have our machines line up and running and starting production, we're going to make sure those machines are getting to where they need to go effectively, as well as taking a look at where the rest of our resources are going and make sure each city is being uh, supplied adequately. Alright, so here's the machines factory that we got started up in the last video and you can see uh, production and shipment numbers slowly ramping up and I think right now the bottleneck is our transport and that's just because we're currently oversupplying machines and we don't have enough uh, ways to get it out of this area. And so the first way that we're not getting enough machines out of here is uh, through this line here and I want to make sure that this is correct because we do bring in planks. I don't want to overdo it with anything. So this sawmill is putting out planks and we can actually see our trucks are starting to pick up plenty more of those. And so let's just take a look here and see what's going on. So this truck is unloading and it looks like it's not unloading everything. So it must be taking the planks somewhere else. And of course, I think I found where that somewhere else is. I think it's dropping some of them off here at the tools factory, which is completely unnecessary now that uh, we've fixed this. So in order to fix this, it should just be a matter of selecting the station. And or actually, we need to go to the Santa Clarita uh, one. And we have it unloading all of the planks. I'm not sure why we can't have it unload everything. All right, so now I think we have it figured out. Actually, I guess we don't. So what I did was we came over here and this station we had so that they can't unload planks anymore, which I was hoping would mean that it would unload all the planks at the machines factory, but that's still not working exactly how we want. So maybe if there's a way that we can play around in here with the uh, full load all, so it only leaves when it has a full load. So that would then in theory force it to unload all of the planks. So we'll have to wait for our next truck to come in to see if that works. And I think one thing we can do while we wait for our trucks to come in, just to make this a little bit easier, well, I guess we can't actually. I was hoping we could fit in another entrance here, but it doesn't seem like it's going to let us, which is fine. It just would have been nice to ease traffic a tiny bit at this intersection, but this shouldn't really be an issue uh, at the moment. All right, and so now we have another plank truck coming in to drop off. Let's see what happens here now. And so now it's just unloaded to a certain point and it's not unloading anymore. So I guess we have to do some more playing around here to see how to fix this. And so after messing around for a bit, I still really can't figure out why this is happening after we've changed the things that we have. The only sort of last ditch thing I can think of is uh, we'll have to wait for our trucks to sort of do a cycle because I think maybe when it picked up the planks the planks were already sort of scheduled to be dropped off over here so we'll have to wait for the trucks to come from the plank factory over to this machines area and then once it drops off its load in the tools factory then once it picks up planks from this sawmill all those planks should be scheduled to unload entirely at this machines factory. And so that's a pretty far out guess, but it's really the last thing I have. So we'll let this go for a little bit while we work on the train portion of it, since our train station is overflowing a little bit with that. And it will be once this factory starts upgrading and leveling up. And so we have these trains here that we made before and I think they're good. However, if we can just find one of those. It's only moving at a rate of 664. 
and I think it's getting a little long for the station. We'll wait for one of these to come in, but if we can get a few more cars on this train, uh, that would be great. But if not, I think we'll just have to get one or two more trains coming into this station, and that should be able to keep up with the demand. And so real quick while we're waiting for a train to come in, I did just notice this truck unloaded everything and now finally picked up machines. So I think our logic was correct. So these trucks, uh, if this is what happened, this one should leave with a full load of machines. And then that should be this line fixed for getting machines out of this area. And so here we have one of our trains pulling into the station. And it looks like we can definitely chuck on a few more cars here, probably close to four, five, even six cars. So we'll come in and we'll edit both of these. So we'll add six cars to each line, and that should work out. We'll see here just how long this one is when it leaves, but we can check the line, and that almost doubles our rate up to 1100. So between this truck line and this train line, uh, and our maximum output of 800, between those two lines, they should be able to handle it as well as they need to. And so now that we do have this figured out, I think I do want to try to get uh, an entrance in here because we do have quite a good bit of traffic popping up here. So I want to get any unnecessary traffic out of this intersection. So we'll come in here with a street connection. Unfortunately, it seems like we might have to rebuild our industry here, which is a little unfortunate, but it didn't take too much work. So we'll just delete this. Uh, we'll get the connections in, the industry replaced, and then we can move on from this area. All right, so our area is back up and running now. And with this new entrance, our trucks should be able to come and go a little bit easier. We did also make this connection into Santa Clarita hoping to maybe draw some traffic off of this road, which might help to free up this intersection here a little bit. All right, and so now one last thing that I wanna do here before we leave it off is just add some storage buildings to this train station quick. Uh, so we'll pull back this road. I guess about there's good enough. We'll configure this and we'll throw in a large storage building, probably right about there with some of these large storage buildings. And then we'll just build this road through here just so it looks right and like there's a connection. All right, so now that we have this all up and through here, let's just toss in some quick painting of asphalt. And then that's pretty much how we'll leave this area. All right, so we'll leave this area off here. Uh, of course, we reset this industry, so it's gonna take a while before uh, things get back going but we'll let this sort of slowly work through its system and then we'll check back in on it later to make sure everything looks good and so continuing on this thread we have our machines dropping off here in order for them to go to Jackson and if we notice here we're hardly taking any machines of course this was probably due to the issues we had earlier but even if we take a look before this line wasn't even making us too much money. And if we come over here to Jackson, we can see, again, we're supplying zero machines, but I think the issue is the location of our line there. I believe we're dropping the machines off at this truck station. However, we have this whole area up here that needs machines. So I think we'll leave the current line that we have dropping machines off here However, we will add another truck stop. And so taking a look around, I think maybe the best spot is probably on this street. And then we'll have to do some moving of the roads to make this a little bit more natural. Also to help extend our reach a tiny bit. So we can do that. And then we'll just have to create a new truck route that comes from here up to here. And this should completely revitalize all the machines that we're bringing into the city. So we can come up to our road depot over here. And of course, I think we'll go with these urban e-trucks. 
since they're small and don't cause much emissions inside of the city. We'll grab eight of those for now and set these up on a line, of course, from here up to our new truck stop. So then we can just set these to be on the same terminal and we should be good to go from there. And so now we can see we're starting to get a ton of demand here and this uh, tools factory or tool line has been pretty overloaded for quite a while. As we can see the rate is only 568. So let's see if we can increase that up to the required 800 with just a simple upgrade of the boats. I believe this is what the old ones are. So I think if we just replace them with these, that should get us close. I think one more and that'll be just above 800. So that's now our tools taken care of. Now, as for our machines, it's a little hard to figure out exactly how much we need to ship over to Jackson. But we should be able to see here, based on these consumers, uh, how many needs to get there. Which right now says only about 100 for the rate, but considering we just looked at the city and saw that uh, it can have easily 900, I think we might need to upgrade these boats as well. But I think we'll let these run and wait for things to sort of even out a bit more, but we will keep an eye on that and maybe come back later once a load or two has been picked up. All right, so I wanna come back to the cargo hub and take a look at our boats, since these are usually the ones that take the longest to update. So I wanna just take a look at what's being held in each area and if there's any adjustments that need to be made. And really the only line that sticks out to me is our cargo hub to Stockton ship. We have a bunch of food waiting here, which it seems like the boats are taking. I think maybe they're all these boats are just bunched up near each other. Yeah, so by the looks of it, it just seems like all those boats are bunched up with each other. This is actually one of those boats here coming in, but I still think it'd be worth it to upgrade. And so I think if we switch to this boat here, the Merlin, it has more compartments, so it should be able to split the loads a little bit more appropriately, so maybe filling three with food and one with goods. Uh, we'll see as that boat pulls in here right now, but I don't think we really need more capacity. I think we just need better uh, distribution when our boats pick up uh, their resources. So interestingly enough, it didn't pick up all the food for some reason, and I'm really unsure as to why that happened. I suppose maybe we can manage the line and tell it here, oh, we've capped it at a 50-50 split. So that's definitely not what we want. We should definitely bring it up to like 80-80. Um, I guess that was just a mistake when we set up the line. Because if we do 50-50, it's not really sustainable because you're never going to get a perfect 50-50 split delivered to the port. You always have one that's maybe slightly higher or slightly lower. So by going over 50-50 to like 60-60 or 70-70 uh, allows for a little bit of uh, unequalness between the line rates. So now coming into our train station, there doesn't seem to be anything that's holding too many resources. We have our uh, train coming in now to relieve this platform, I believe. Actually, that's for a different line. So let's take a look at this line and see if maybe we have one of these trains coming up here soon. All right, and so we actually had one just leave from the cargo hub, so I think... I'm not sure if another train is really warranted for this. I think we'll leave it because it's not overflowing the station. But these trains are so long that if we added another one, that would definitely be overboard. And we can see this one's leaving entirely full besides a little bit of construction materials, but I think that's perfectly fine. Alright, so following that line out here, uh, we've had quite a good bit of time for resources to build up or... Uh, be completely empty here. 
So I just want to take a moment to come through here and double check that everything is looking good. And it looks like for the most part a lot of our lines are doing really well in terms of their balance. The trucks are leaving full, but the platforms are not sort of overdoing it. Now we do have to keep in mind that we did just have a train drop off a load of resources and we don't really have another one coming for quite a while, so maybe this is uh, just sort of inflating our numbers right now, but we should be able to come in here and take a look at the details of each line and we should be able to see as long as they're consistently making us money, I think we're probably doing something right. Another thing we can check is this chart here, which shows how many resources it's transported. And what we could do is sort of find the average of this number. And so it looks like this probably sits around 160 and our rate is up at 213. So we can probably adjust that, sell one of these, get our rate down a little bit lower. So it's a little bit more in line with our average over the last couple of years. And that would be one good way to uh, keep our line rates sort of in check. Similarly here, this line is really only transporting maybe about 150, 140. Uh, this rate is up at 180. So I think again, we'll probably sell one of these. And we'll go through and do that for the rest of these just to make sure that uh, we're leaving resources for when we're sort of between loads. All right, so we've gone through and rebalanced all the truck lines that come in through here. And conveniently, we do have another train coming in right about now. So uh, these platforms should pretty much be cleared by the time the next train comes in. But uh, we'll move on to the other ones and do a similar thing with that. So we have this one over here for Albuquerque and Winston-Salem. And this one seems to have a lot of resources waiting, but Yet again, it seems like a train did just stop. All right, so coming to here and taking a look at these, uh, we're just gonna pretty much do the same thing. So for this Winston-Salem uh, truck line, we can just take a look at the average. Again, this probably sits just under 200. So we maybe don't need quite as many trucks. So I think we'll sell two, uh, maybe one more and we'll be good. Next line, the same thing. We're probably sitting at about an average of 160-ish, and we're about 100 over that on our line rate. And then this one, which is probably actually closer to 75, I think we're definitely over here. Yeah, with 231 for that rate, we could probably sell well over half of those. Now, part of this could be that we just simply need to update the truck stop locations in each area since we can see Winston-Salem does need a lot of goods. However, it doesn't seem like they're getting there. So let's actually see where this is going. So we combined our machines and goods and this still seems like a pretty good location for them. So I'm not sure why that would change. I think it's just because the sheer amount of goods and machines that are needed over here. However, I think we'll just leave it for now. Our truck stop is in a good location. It's just nothing compared to the rest of the city. Uh, so we'll focus on fixing the rates first before we do anything else. All right, so now after doing all of that, uh, there really wasn't much to change besides uh, we did move this truck stop. It was up here, we moved it down here. Since now that this area is filling in with a bunch of industry, we can see that a lot of it requires goods. And I think it's pretty exciting to see this area filled in with buildings finally. I think it really helps to fill out the city and really activate the area by the water. And so I think the last big uh, cargo distribution area that we have to look at is here just outside of Montgomery where we have a ton of construction materials waiting. And these trucks have definitely been operating as well as they can. So let's first of all upgrade these because they are very old trucks. So let's try to go with these Urban E trucks again and see how much that increases the line rate. We'll also change the color of these to maybe a dark blackish gray. 
Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to change the color of the actual truck itself. It seems to just change the color of the container. However, I think it's obvious just based on the amount of construction materials here that we can probably increase the amount of vehicles on here by a good bit. Now, we don't want to go too crazy because we don't really know how much we're covering with our truck stop, but I think maybe 150 might be a good spot to start because that's almost doubling what we previously had. Now, our tools line has also been doing pretty well. However, the trucks are just kind of old. So let's maybe get some slightly newer trucks running this line. And so replacing them with a truck of similar capacity, we get a rate that is much similar to what it was before. So we can pretty much just leave that. And then the last one we have to adjust slightly is our food line. So I think we'll just sell two of these vehicles and that'll be good there. So now one thing I wanna do here is add a line for machines. Because we can see Montgomery doesn't have any machines uh, being supplied to it. It also doesn't have fuel, but I think fuel might be a little bit... Well, fuel wouldn't be trickier to get here, but let's just take a look at the layout of the city first. And so it seems like the only area that really needs machines is right here in sort of a very dense location. Uh, there is no truck stops near it. We actually have a few more down here. And unfortunately... It seems like, well, we could place a truck stop here. We'll just have to keep an eye on this intersection, make sure it doesn't get too busy. But having this one here covers all the machines that are up here and all the machines down here. So then we can just simply find our road depot and we can grab a couple of machines or a couple of trucks to supply those machines into the city. And so now our train here should uh, start to bring in machines. We'll just have to make sure that we have that checked from the cargo hub. So it'll also bring in machines. And I think we'll actually just duplicate this and get a second train on this line. Uh, that'll help us keep up with resources. I'm not sure if that's necessarily warranted, but we'll see uh, sort of the capacity of these trains once they get going a little bit, um, sort of how much they can handle. All right, so then that should be Montgomery being supplied with pretty much every resource. Uh, again, I don't think I'm gonna worry about fuel because it's so low, we really won't be able to make much use out of it. I mean, I guess what we can do is we can come in here, we can edit these vehicles and maybe we can take away two flat cars from each and then we'll just find our tank cars and we'll just add two tank cars onto the end of each train and that should maybe be enough to supply that demand. So then we'll just have to adjust this to then allow fuel, which it does. And then we'll have to set up a new line to bring fuel from here to probably the same truck station. Or actually, I think we can just probably modify uh, this one to also take fuel. So yeah, we'll do that. Since these are two relatively low demand uh, resources, they can probably just be handled by one truck line going to one stop. So now as I'm going through and taking a look at the cities and making sure that they're at least getting the resources they need, uh, Mesa we haven't looked at in a long time, and this station is by far very overloaded. So these trucks, first of all, very old and these can probably just get replaced and I think we'll just replace them with a generic truck that can carry everything since we do have three different resources here and that should greatly improve this line the next one that definitely needs looked at is our fuel line which again has some pretty old trucks running on it so if we just simply come in here and find maybe a better tank truck this should greatly improve uh, the efficiency of this line. And so we can see Mesa is being supplied with every resource, so that's something good to see. Shockingly, the city's actually declining in people, and I wonder why that is. It seems like emissions is cutting into that pretty much, and that's probably due to our airport, which flies straight over the city uh, in order to get to the rest of the map. And actually, while we're here, it seems like we finally have decent demand for 
one of our lines between Montgomery and Mesa, so perhaps we can finally get a pretty full, large plane in here. So let's sort by passenger planes. And I think the ones that we're currently running are these uh, Bombardier planes that only have a capacity of 22. We can use one of these DC-10 planes to really bump up our numbers. And as tempting as that is, I do think it will be overkill with three planes. So we'll start with this Boeing 757 and sort of go from there. Because, again, we want our plane to be able to get up to top speed between these two cities since it is so short. And so just taking a look here, our plane is already slowing down. It only really reached a top speed of 200 miles an hour before it starts, I guess, descending for Montgomery. So maybe even this plane is a little bit too big for what we're trying to do here. However, I think we'll just stick with it because there's not really a plane that better fits our needs since it is somewhat high demand. Uh, I don't want to get like 20 small planes taking this trip, so we'll just leave that and hopefully we'll see this airport finally getting utilized to its full potential. And now of course Downey is getting all the resources it needs. San Jose is also getting a fair portion of the resources it needs as well. And moving on to Winston-Salem and Albuquerque, Winston-Salem's getting all the resources, Albuquerque's getting uh, all six resources as well. Stockton is getting everything besides construction materials, but I think that number's so low that we can sort of ignore that. And it looks like Stockton's actually really starting to branch out, filling out this peninsula, which is pretty cool to see. Sacramento is also getting everything besides construction materials, probably for the same reason Stockton is. Modesto is getting all six resources. And both Jackson and Scottsdale are getting all the resources it needs, although it's probably well under what's actually required, but we are supplying at least all six resources in some capacity. Same thing in Santa Clarita, as well as Birmingham, which continues to grow inside of this little corner. And lastly, Montgomery, which is still waiting on its first load of machines and fuel. And so shockingly, we're actually really close to supplying every resource to every city on the map, which is a pretty big accomplishment, especially considering all the cities on this map. So I think to close out this episode, we'll get construction materials headed out to Stockton and Sacramento, and then we can end it off there. And so getting these resources into the city uh, is as simple as adding that to one of these lines. It looks like both of these are carrying two sets of resources, so we'll have to sort of figure out which one we want to carry three instead. But I think we'll do that with this line since this boat can also carry, uh, has four compartments, so it can carry up to four different resources if needed. So I'll add construction materials to that mix, and then we'll have to find a good spot to deliver those, which seems to be right here at this stop, so we can just simply manage this line to include construction materials as well, and then we'll have to include it on this line going up to Sacramento, so we'll throw that in there. That should help supply this line a bit more. And then we'll just have to find where Sacramento needs uh, the construction materials. And it seems like right here at this one, well, I guess we never set construction materials to come up to Sacramento, so we already have the line set up. It was just never making us money because they were never coming here. So that should be fixed. Again, let's just double check that. So yeah, construction materials should start coming up here. And with time, that'll be every resource connected to, or every city uh, receiving every resource. And so coming back to sort of where we started this video, uh, the machines factory seems to be doing well. Our cargo trains are getting those resources out of here, as well as our trucks are getting these out of here as well. Seems to be a bit of a backup. Uh, I think maybe this line, I'm not sure if these trucks are, spacing themselves out or if we just have that many that there's a bit of a backup 
It is so long that I do think maybe these trucks are just sort of backed up. Uh, hopefully all of these aren't. Well, some of these are actually steel trucks. So let's actually split these to different terminals. And that should help out greatly with the amount of traffic coming into here. And so looking at our industry itself, it is slowly building up uh, its transport numbers as... Uh, the resources are pretty much waiting to where they need to go. If we take a look here, it seems like a good portion of them are on their way to Winston-Salem and Jackson, although I'm not sure why there's not a transport number for Jackson yet. Although over here, we should see that these machines are now heading out to Jackson, which is what we see. So I think a lot of that's just waiting because, first of all, boats take forever to move. Um... We probably haven't even gotten a trip between there and Jackson between when we started this video. So it is going to take a while for those numbers to update. Same thing with the lines we recently added. If we take a look at our line that goes up to Montgomery, we still don't have any machines or fuel lined up. Although I think we did just have one of these trains leave. So yeah, this one just left. And of course, no machines, no fuel. So it is going to be a while until we see those numbers come back up and so I think with that we're going to pretty much be ending this video off here but one thing I do want to touch on is that there's not really much more for us to do on this map I know we can probably connect another goods factory to the cargo hub and connect more industries there but every resource is getting or every city is getting its resources and really I think sort of maintaining the upkeep on all the lines on this map is starting to become a bit much with 13 cities I believe uh, it just gets a lot to stay on top of it especially while they're growing so fast especially at this point so I think this series is going to start winding down as we'll probably still uh, make a few more passenger connections just for uh, improving efficiency and then coming through and maybe uh, detailing some loose ends that we just sort of left around that we never got back to. But really there's not going to be many more significant things that we do to this map. So with that said, uh, we will be preparing for the next series, which I'm hoping to have much larger scale, much more exciting things happening. So there will be more on that in the future, but I think this series has been immensely helpful in continuing to learn the game uh, and fleshing out all the small things that this game has to offer. I think there's some really unique moments on this map that uh, I really want to make sure that I show off before we end this series. So anyway, I think with that, we'll end this video off here. So if you enjoyed this episode, please like and subscribe. If you have any suggestions or feedback, Leave a comment below. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.